humans have had a long-lasting innate fear of arachnids. Whether it be movies like Arachnophobia or The Hobbit, arachnids have instilled fear in even the strongest of men. Last time we were here at the pavilion at the Natural History Museum, we got to witness the amazing transformation of butterflies from egg to caterpillar to chrysalis to adult. Today we're going to stay in the world of arthropods, but a spider is no insect. Rather it's an arachnid, classified by having two body segments instead of three, eight legs instead of six, and includes other species like scorpions, mites, and ticks. Let's check them out. Feel that? My spidey senses are tingling. Hip Hop MD, Hip Hop Science. I am here with my official gallery interpreter, my GI for the day, Dan. How are you doing today, Dan? Doing great today. Awesome. Well, I am back here at the Spider Pavilion. Last time I was here, it was the Butterfly Pavilion. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we've changed completely, right? We've gone from insects to arachnids, and we got spiders literally everywhere. So we're gonna walk through here. You're gonna be a, give me exclusive guided tour, right? Absolutely. Okay, let's have some fun, see what's out here. Okay, so I, first thing I noticed when I walked in here, there are literally spiders everywhere. Can you let people know, did you guys place the spiders here? How did the spiders end up where they're at, and what can we expect to see today? Yeah, so in the spider pavilion, there's no barriers between us and the spiders. Okay. So they're gonna be on plants. We did semi-curate this area, kind of mm -hmm. guiding them to certain places, not on the path, of course. Yeah. But we keep want them, them keep a little bit out of people's way, right? Absolutely. Don't want to we walk want them into to any be spider in webs. more of a natural environment as much mm -hmm. as possible. But it is an open air pavilion, okay. so we do have a variety of spiders on also structures that we've provided for them as well. Most of them will be sitting on their webs for the majority of the time in the pavilion. Okay. They don't move as much. They're most active at night mm -hmm. or in kind of the early evening. Are orb weavers native here to California? Absolutely. We okay. have several different species of orb, orb weavers. A lot of them are native to California. We do mm -hmm. have a couple that are a little bit more exotic from the Southeast of the United States and one mm -hmm. from Southeast Asia. Can we see some of those here? Absolutely. So we have several of these golden silk spiders Ooh. and a lot of native species too. For example, we have this one right behind me, the silver agaipi spider. So okay. if you wanted to take a closer look, the silver agaipi is one that we could probably find in backyards. It usually just hangs out on its web, making this sort of X shape with its legs. Let's go ahead and take a look at one that's maybe from a little bit further afield. Oh, here we have a beautiful example of a golden silk spider. If you'd like to take a closer look, we have the golden silk spiders. Those are ones that we gather from places like Louisiana, Florida, so those are the places you might see them more in their natural environment. We have a lot of these golden silk spiders here. This is the spider you're going to see most often. It's one of the larger species as well. It also has this beautiful golden web, which is giving it its name. And they often get the nickname banana spider because of their interesting abdomen shape. You can see that kind of large orange yeah. banana shape. And then they also have these cute little leg warmers, as we sometimes call them. Mm. Uh, those little fuzzy hairs that are actually sensory hairs. That's how they sense their world, kind of like cat whiskers, but mixed with a taste and smell sense as well. Something very unique about the webs that they spin. Can you tell us a little bit more specifically about their silk and their webs? Yeah, their silk is incredibly strong. Orb weavers weave about seven different types of silk. So okay. they have sticky, non-stick, sticky. You have- uh, Wait, it's up to seven different types? Seven different types really? of silk, yeah. Wow, how do they produce seven different types of silk? Because I know it's something about the proteins within their bodies, right? Yeah. It starts as a liquid and then when it's released down to the atmosphere, that's when it turns solid, correct? Yeah. So how do they differentiate differentiate what they need with the different types of silk? Well, it's just a part of their bodily function. Okay. They can create different types of silk for, say, reproduction. When their uh, tiny little spiderlings just coming out of their egg sacs, they can balloon away to find different areas to live wow. in. Okay. Uh, so they can actually use that silk to travel as well as create these beautiful webs that they have. And these, the silk actually has medical applications. People are starting to research this more and oh, wow. being able to figure out useful ways because it's stronger than steel technically, right. stronger than uh, steel. So mm -hmm. it's also kind of like Kevlar. It's very flexible, very unique. And they also reabsorb that silk back into their bodies. They break down their webs occasionally. Mm -hmm. And so they're recyclers. Mm -hmm. So that technology is actually being used right now. Like you said, medical yes. devices, Kevlar, bulletproof vests, maybe. Things yeah, like that. so people are just starting to figure out how can we utilize this really 
interesting, unique material mm. that's made by spiders inside of their bodies. Mm. And it's all from the protein that they're eating too. Okay. So it's an amazing ability that they all have, mm. uh, but not all spiders weave webs, like I said. So yeah. you have Because they all produce silk, right? All produce, but they produce silk, but not every spider makes webs. Right? Yeah, and they mm -hmm. use them differently depending on the species of spiders, because spiders as a group are very diverse. You have yeah. things like small jumping spiders, larger mm. tarantulas, okay. the, of course, the orb weavers that we have in here. We mm. have wolf spiders and things Ooh. like that in tiny little spider houses outside okay. the pavilion. So yeah, those, we'll, we'll check those out those too a little bit later on. Those won't be free range, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> so those ones are a little bit more dangerous. Gotta keep those in protection, right? Joe Button may as well have been describing a spider's method of movement when he dropped this classic, pump it up. Spiders don't use their muscles, but rather hydraulic pressure to pump fluids into their legs in order to run or leap to catch prey. Now, what would these spiders uh, typically eat? You said some crickets, what yeah. other uh, organisms would you guys usually feed them here? Uh, so, crickets or larva, okay. essentially. So little mealworms, essentially, that you place into the webs. Mm. So they're injecting the venom to they usually are eating arthropods, right? Mm. That's their major food source. Yeah. Flies, of course, because they're orb weavers, they tend to catch more flying insects, maybe like moths okay. and things in the early morning yeah. and uh, late evening. Now, how venomous are these orb weaver spiders in here? Well, their venom is really for food. So mm -hmm. it's mostly the digestive enzyme. So if we were to say be accidentally bitten, bitten by a spider, mm -hmm. that really wouldn't affect us at all. Only if you had an extreme allergic reaction. So none, none of these are gonna turn me into Spider-Man. Right? No, okay. unfortunately, cool. no Spider-Man abilities here. 660 horsepower, capable of going 0 to 60 in 3 seconds. No, I'm not talking about the Ferrari 488 Spider. What? I do need a new whip. I'm talking about the Flatty Spider, better known as the Wall Crab Spider. This spider species has the largest turning maneuver of any land animal in the world, capable of spinning to catch its prey at speeds of up to 3,000 degrees per second. Talk about going from 0 to 60 real quick. So yeah, could you describe a little bit about their eating structure on these guys? Absolutely. So the first part that we can talk about is their pedipalps. The pedipalps okay. are really extra appendages. They kind of look like tiny little legs in front of their face, but that's yeah. really to manipulate food. They also help clean themselves with those. Mm. And it's really interesting to see them move those pedipalps because they're really for manipulation. Now I've seen the uh, videos of like tarantulas going through the molting right. process, right? They use this kind of hydraulic pumping pressure mm. kind of mechanism to escape out of the exoskeleton. Do other species do kind of similar thing? Yes, they do the exact same thing. They're pumping their hemolymph kind of through their body, trying mm -hmm. to push themselves out of that exoskeleton because they've okay. grown out of it. Yeah, Essentially, yeah. tarantulas do it a little bit differently. They create a little mat of silk. Mm -hmm. They'll turn upside down so they almost look like they're dying or dead. And it's actually a very dangerous process for them to go through, as you can imagine. Yeah, because they're, they're very up. fragile during that stage, exactly, right? Exactly, and they're vulnerable too. Mm -hmm. So that they'll flip upside down as a tarantula and then they'll kind of emerge from that exoskeleton as well. Mm -hmm. So they do it a little bit different way, but the orb weaves will essentially pull themselves using gravity as well to kind of pull themselves down and mm. out of their exoskeleton. So we got some cool spiders out here on the exterior, but we got just as many cool spiders on the inside. Let's check it out. Yeah, so these are the jumping spiders. We have these spiders separately in cases because they move around a little bit more. They can be more active hunters. And so these jumping spiders will actually just be kind of sitting there on the little uh, furniture that we provide for them. They'll even sort of look and turn at us because they're a little bit more active and they have pretty good eyesight as well. And these jumping spiders are really amazing. They use that hydraulic action you're we talking about for molting in the same way to kind of push themselves forward or jump really far distances. They have telescopic vision. Oh, okay. Their eyes are more forward facing mm -hmm. than most spiders. Some spiders have them kind of all around their head, kind of yeah. seeing all around them, but they want to see forward. They have two at least large eyes looking forward so mm -hmm. they can judge that distance and how far they can go. How uh, far can these jumping spiders typically jump? Um, they can jump several feet. Gymnast status, right? Yeah. There. <laughs> <laughs> this one might also be ready to have its breakfast as well. Mm -hmm. So they're a little bit more protective. Sometimes we'll find them kind of hiding underneath the bench that we have over here. And again, so just like the jumping spiders, they're going to be more of a stalking spider, which is why it gets the name wolf. Most of these tarantulas tend to hide a little bit more often. This one is actually out right now, which is really interesting. You can see a little bit more closely and they actually have those really bright colors. And again, these tarantulas are more terrestrial, so they're more likely to create burrows underneath the ground. And some are arboreal, so they'll be able to climb trees and things like that. The pink toe tarantula is sitting in the back of that little shower over there. And so you can see the variety of silk that they use. They build silk in retreats instead of 
large orb weaving webs like the ones that we have inside the building. All right, Dan, we've explored and seen so many different cool arachnids here. What is one thing if you want people to walk away from here or just in general knowing about spiders that you feel people should know or appreciate about these beautiful species that we see here? Well, spiders are often misunderstood. They play a really important role in their ecosystem and yeah. they're amazing art architects. They're beautiful. They create these beautiful webs and have all this variety of silk yeah. that we're just starting to kind of crack open. And that's really useful for scientists, people who are engineers, people who are working on biomedical stuff. Uh, uh, so these spiders are really important, not just for us in their ecosystems, mm -hmm. but also for us with technology too and new yeah. developments. All right, that is an official wrap here at the Natural History Museum Spider Pavilion. We got to get a first-hand close-up look at some very unique and interesting species. We got to see how spiders utilize their silk to make webs to catch prey, their eating methods, and their benefit to us and nature as natural pest control. Proving once again why these arachnids are not to be feared, but loved, treasured, nurtured, caressed. Okay, caressed may be going too far, but seeing the docile nature of these arachnids goes contrary to everything we've been taught through media and pop culture, proving why these species need to be protected just like every other animal. I'm the Hip Hop MD, this is Hip Hop Science, we are off to our next science quest. Spidey web! <laughs>